I am Batman. I mean, Average Sniper. What's up guys, Average Sniper here. Today I have some tips and tricks for you that will help you do better at Apex Legends, getting more kills and getting more wins. I've collected these tips and tricks from personal experience with the game, uh, from advice that my friends have given me that play the game, and from watching other videos on the internet that have random tips and tricks included in them. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, the first thing you want to do is think about your landing, because that is where the game starts. You want to jump as soon as you can if the location is fairly close to you. If the location is over a thousand meters away, you might want to wait till you're about 750 meters out. When you're landing, you want to angle downwards and then angle back upwards and try to maintain a speed of right around 145. When you land, you want to land close to your squad, but not necessarily in the same building as them because then you'll be stealing each other's loot. Break off from your squad as right before you land and mark the building you're going to go to so that you can each get your own loot and you can be close enough to support each other if something bad happens. And if you all land right next to an enemy squad, stick together and try to punch them. The punching in this game is amazing. I have seen squads take out other squads with guns just because they started punching them while they were picking up the guns. Each punch is going to do 30 damage and if they're at full health it will take four punches to kill and if your entire team is helping with this you will get them killed very fast. Be able to take their gun, turn around and fight the other enemies that may or may not already have weapons. Now let's talk a little bit about combat. It is very important not to remain static while you shoot. You want to be moving back and forth, forward and backwards, as much as possible. Now, if the enemy is far away and you need to take accurate shots, that is one reason when you might need to stand still. But keep in mind that if you're in close range, the hip fire in this game is incredibly accurate, and you will have a higher probability of getting that kill if you move back and forth and hip fire at the enemy, as opposed to standing still and attempting to take very accurate shots. As soon as you stand still, you make yourself an easy target, and you will get shredded either by the guy you're fighting or by someone that you don't see. When you're in a gunfight that's not ending quickly, or you're fighting multiple opponents, keep moving, keep flanking, use obstacles such as roofs, rocks, walls, whatever, to flank around, get on top of. It's always good to have the high ground when you attack the enemy so that you can pop out in different locations and shoot, uh, at, and shoot at your leisure. You do not want the enemy to be in a position where you have to wait for them to appear, uh, and they can easily shoot you back. Use cover flanking obstacles to the best of your ability. Don't stay in one place like you might do in another game like PUBG. You want to be aggressive, you want to move, you want to attack, and uh, basically you just always want to be on the move. Uh, be super aggressive. If you or your teammate downs an enemy, you should all move in as soon as possible. People can get revived and heal very quickly in this game, so the last thing you want to do is keep wearing them down and keep letting them heal. What's going to happen in that case is either you or the other team are going to get flanked by a third party and you're going to get taken out before you have a chance to finish them off. If you down someone, move in with your team and take the rest of them out while they are weak. Communicate as much as possible with your team. I think this goes without saying, but with the new ping system, it's easy to just not talk. But you do want to let your team know what you're doing. Hey guys, I'm going to flank them. Hey guys, there's three of them behind the rock. Hey guys, I just downed one of them. Let's move in and kill them. All these things are, are good, even if your teammates don't have a mic, just so they understand what's going on and they can support you in your quest to Apex Legends victory. Stay close to your teammates, but don't stay too close. Uh, what I mean by this is you don't all three want to get stuck in a room or behind a rock or in one building because those grenades are going to come in and they're just going to destroy you. You want to stay close enough to support but not close enough to where you all get stuck in the same place. And I can't stress this enough, flank, flank, flank. You can move so fast in this game, it's very easy to flank. Even if you're in a gunfight with an enemy, if he gets distracted by one of your teammates and has to start shooting at them, immediately move from the position where the enemy knew where you were and attempt to get closer on the enemy's flank, behind them, beside them. The last thing you want to do is run straight at them. When enemies run straight at me, I really love that because it's easy to pop out and just completely annihilate them or at least damage them to the point where your teammates can take them out the rest of the way. Teamwork is very important in this game, but flanking is just as important. Let's talk a little about healing. Uh, the Phoenix Kit is going to be the most important because the Phoenix Kit not only restores your shields but also your health in one use. 
The shield battery is my favorite though, because usually when you get damaged, uh, you can take cover before your shield is fully destroyed and you can use a shield battery to get it working again, pop out, continue your fight, flank, whatever the situation calls for. Shield cell is the third most important. Uh, med kit I classify as the fourth most important. And last but not least, we have the syringe. The shield cell will slowly heal your um, shield one cell at a time. The med kit will fully restore your health but not your shield. And the syringe will restore about 25% of your health when you use it. Uh, maybe a little more than that. I'm not 100% sure, but it does not do full health when you use the syringe. Uh, I always keep the shield battery equipped, even if I have a Phoenix kit, for fast repairs of my shields. This has saved me in so many gunfights when I need to just step back, do a quick shield battery to get my shield fully healed, and then get back into the fight and support my teammates. Alright, let's talk a little bit about teamwork. Teamwork, teamwork and abilities. Teamwork is incredibly important in this game. This is not necessarily a game where you can do a solo versus a three-man squad. Sure, there's plenty of times when you or me may have wiped a three-man squad by yourself, but it's usually because they are bots that have no idea what they're doing or they attacked you one at a time. Uh, if all three players know what they're doing and have good weapons, good shields, and good health, you will have zero chance of destroying them unless you are simply a god, in which case you don't need to be watching this video to get better at the game. <laughs> so make sure that you stick close to your team no matter what and don't do anything crazy like running into a room full of enemies without letting your team know exactly what you're doing so they can be there to support you. And vice versa, you should always be there to support your team. If you see one of your teammates getting into a fight and they seem to be losing or just getting in a fight in general, you should always make sure you're in a place where you can respond very quickly and help your teammate out as soon as possible. The last thing you want is for them to go down, get thirsted, and then have to respawn them in or be down a teammate if they decide to leave the game. A lot of people will rage quit after they get killed because they are unsatisfied with the teamwork going on and, you know, a lot of times it's their fault. They'll run in and get themselves killed, but just make sure you're there for your teammates as much as possible because when you need them, they need to be there for you. All right, let's talk a little bit about the abilities of each legend. So these abilities should mainly be used to help your team or help yourself out if you're in a situation that you can't control. Uh, one of the abilities that is great for helping the team, just as an example, is Gibraltar Shield. Uh, however, it can be used in a bad way too. Uh, if you are throwing the shield up uh, around your teammates just because you are taking damage, you're going to make it hard for your teammates to shoot back at the enemy. This has happened to me several times. Uh, another one that is a little tricky to master would be Caustic's Gas. I can't tell you how many times I've been playing with teammates and they throw them down a gas canister right beside me. An enemy triggers it and while it doesn't necessarily do any damage to me, it does blur the vision and make it hard to move. So, uh, your abilities need to be used to support your team as much as possible, but make sure that you don't hinder your team when you use them. Don't call a missile strike down on top of your team. Don't throw a shield up just to protect yourself if you have cover to go to. And try your best not to gas your teammates out with Caustic's gas. <laughs> Other than that, the abilities are pretty self-explanatory and can be used in different situations to get the win or eliminate the squad that you're fighting. Let's talk a little bit about the end game. All right, in the end game, uh, my best strategy so far is to wait for the last two squads to start fighting and attack them while they're in the middle of this fight or right after it's finished. I found that it's best to attack right when they're in the middle of the fight because both teams are damaged. If you can easily clean up both teams while they're damaged, then you get an easy win. All right. Um, if you get, if you do happen to get in a fight with a third to last squad, you want to end the fight as soon as possible because you can be guaranteed, you can guarantee yourself that the squad that's not in the fight is going to capitalize and try to third party uh, just like we just talked about. So the last thing you want is to be fighting another squad and then get shot in the back and lose the game in third place. Finish them off quickly, relocate, heal yourself up. If you find yourself in a 1v1 squad situation, it's tricky. Treat it just like any other fight, but try your best not to go down. If you get shot down to low health, uh, retreat and heal yourself up. The worst thing you can do uh, when fighting 1v1 squads is go down and leave two of your teammates fighting three enemies. 
So do your best to keep yourself alive and support your team as much as possible. Know where all your teammates are and stay in communication with them. Let them know where the enemies are. Uh, do not let one of your teammates do all the fighting by themselves. If one of them runs in and starts fighting, be as supportive as possible. Maybe you don't want to push the enemy, but if one of your teammates has already done that, you just have to accept the situation as it is and be as aggressive as possible. And as always, if you severely wound or down an enemy, especially in the end game, move in all together as a unit and finish them off for the win. You have to take them out while they're weak. Do not let them heal up. Now here's some random tips and tricks I picked up while playing the game, and uh, these will just help you uh, during any part of the gameplay, whether it's beginning, middle, or end. You can put your gun away to run faster. You run a lot faster with your gun away. And while you're sliding, regardless of whether your gun is out or not, or whether you're going downhill, you move a lot faster. Uh, you can peek over ledges by half climbing them. You start to climb the ledge and then you let go of the climb button and you will be able to peek the ledge. Just make sure you don't get shot in the face while doing that. Uh, watch for squads for the red flashing player death indicator when you can't see how many players are left. If you take note of how many players are left before the game stops telling you and then watch it to flash red, that indicates when a player has died and you can keep track of how many players are left towards the end of the game. Uh, Lifeline's heal bot can actually be used by enemies. So if you get into a fight and you see that there's already a heal bot, instead of using your own, just continue to heal using the enemy's heal bot. Uh, you can use doors to climb up the roofs. I actually learned this over at the market uh, that has a roof that people just like to be on for some reason, probably because it's so big. You can, instead of using the stairways to climb up or the ropes to go up from inside, you can actually close those massive doors, climb up them, and uh, flank the enemies from there. They will not be expecting you to climb up onto the roof from a random spot. This also applies to smaller buildings when you can open the door and use that to climb up to the roof. Uh, Hitboxes are different for each character. So if you choose a larger character, you have a much a uh, better chance of getting killed by somebody with potato aim. So try and choose the very small characters. I don't know if this is something that might change in the future, but that's how it is right now. Uh, shoot the bottom of gas traps to destroy them without leaking the gas. If you see an enemy gas trap that you need to move past, if you go too close to it, it will explode. Or if you shoot it, it will explode and the gas will be everywhere. However, if you shoot the very bottom of it, it will simply disappear and no gas will come out. Keep moving while looting enemy death crates. You want to keep moving back and forth because if someone is watching you loot, the last thing you want to do is give them easy headshots on you. While you're moving, this will actually discourage them from shooting because it will alert you and your team that you are being targeted. Use the ping system as much as possible, even if you can communicate with your teammates. Mark any equipment they might need, mark locations where you see enemies, and mark locations where you want to go. Enemy body armor is always at full capacity after they die. So for example, if you have a level 4 uh, body armor and you get into a gunfight and you win, but your body armor is smashed and you need to use a shield battery, if the enemy you was fighting had a level 4 armor, even if you shot it off, it will be at full health. So go pick up their armor instead of wasting a shield battery or multiple shield cells to heal up. Well guys, I hope this video helps you get tons of wins in Apex Legends. Remember, the most important part of all of this is teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. If you have a bad team, no matter how good you are at the game, you have a very small chance of winning. And make sure you are not the weak link on your team. Remember, even if you have trouble shooting people, support your team as much as possible. Stay close to them. Even if it's just one or two hits you get on them, that might be all that it need, all that you need to take them down and save your team. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'll see you guys on the next video or live stream. Later everyone. Yeah, just nice to cover. Nice.